Hi there, Miss Seward again. Let's continue on with learning about making collages in Photoshop. So just a reminder, please make sure you're starting with a blank document so you are in control, not your internet images. Now let's talk about how you're going to get images. There's lots of different ways to collect imagery to use in your digital artwork. One of the simplest ways is to get them from the internet. So you can use Google search tools. I like to go right into images and start looking for something that I might want to use for my collage. I thought about using a book pages for my collage, that that would be kind of interesting way to incorporate some text into my collage. So when you're looking at imagery, images, you'll get all kinds of results based off of the words that are tagged with them. You can specify and control that a little bit. Um, if I wanted a book only with pages, I could say book plus pages, and that'll give me more specific pages. Or I could say book minus pages, and that will try to exclude my favorite example of this, if you'll indulge me for just a moment. So if you are looking up your favorite Justin, not that one, Right, you're looking for Justin and you go to Google and it only shows you that one Justin, it's maybe not the one you're looking for. There's some things you can do to control that. So I can exclude by typing minus and exclude that particular Justin from a search. And if I want to get more specific, I want to make sure that I find only my favorite Justin. I can say plus Timberlake and it will narrow down the search to more. Of course, you'll always see things like that's not Justin Timberlake, right? But his name is somehow associated with the article that came with that. So you can control a little bit more. You can go into tools and control even more. Um, if you're not finding the resolution you want, then you can control it with size. And how you see the resolution before you even download it is by mousing over the image. And you will see these numbers here. 3200 by 1800, 1680 by 1050, those are pixel dimensions. That's how many pixels per square inch. So there's 1280 pixels this way, 640 pixels this way. These larger numbers are good to work with in Photoshop. All of these up in the thousands, these are great. If you find images like this one, 454, if I plan on scaling it very large, it's probably not going to work very well. So I might want to keep looking and find a stack of books like this one that has a higher resolution. And if you click on it, you can kind of see that there's you know some pixelization already in there. And please, while you're learning Photoshop, try to avoid these. You'll see lots of PNGs online where you see this checkerboard that's telling you that it's all the way to the paper. It's got a transparent background that's really amateur to use a lot of those. So please make sure you're not using more than like one or two of those already in your collage. You guys need to learn how to be the ones that clean out the backgrounds, not just grabbing them. So if I find a book page, I want this one's kind of cute. So you don't want to just grab the thumbnail. You actually want to click and expand the image. Then I can right click on it and choose save image as and for this I can go to my downloads and put it in my downloads that's one way to do it and then I open up my GDIM folder and drag it from my downloads to my folder or let's get a different picture since we're at it I can right click save image as and navigate directly to my folder on the GDIM drive so as long as you are saving your work in your GDIM folder, how you get there is up to you. Okay, so I can save it then, and now I have two book images, and I can close this. Notice I didn't download the thumbnail. I clicked and expanded on the image and downloaded that one. That again will give you the better quality to be able to manipulate and edit your images in Photoshop. And when I save, So I can right click, choose save image as, and notice when I save, if I want to change the document name, I do not mess with the .jpg. From Chrome, it comes in highlighted, write what you need, so 
you just start typing and you can replace the name. But do not delete the .jpg. Photoshop won't know where to open your image. So you might be saying now, but what about copyrights? Right? It says right here, image may be subject to copyright. So to avoid any copyright infringements or issues, one way around that is to download your own imagery or bring in your own drawings or photographs and scan them. Um, you can, if you have them on your phone, you can send them to your Google Drive and download them into your folder that way. That's a fairly simple way to get images. But there's also copyright free imagery and fair usage. So while we're students, while we're learning these, I actually like the experience that you get by going on Google Images, finding high resolution, low resolution, all different kinds of images. When you're looking at and using specific stock imagery, sometimes you miss out on that because you're only getting professionally prepared imagery. So for this project, use a little bit of both. Um, you know, use some of your own, use some from online. But if you know that you want to be a professional and you want to really start building a professional portfolio and avoiding copyright from the beginning, or just getting um, accustomed to tools for getting around copyrights, then you want to use something like Creative Commons. So you can go to Google and type in Creative Commons search. You can either go to their main search where you can get to lots of different sites, um, but they now have a new beta version that is pretty cool. So I can go here and look for book pages and find all different kinds of imagery, not just photographs, sometimes artwork, sometimes drawings, lots of photography, and these have all been granted with a Creative Commons attribute and so it says right here it's been licensed under Creative Commons so you can copy the text and give credit if you want to and sometimes it'll even tell you if you're required to so if it doesn't say that we're required to give credit to the original artist it means that we can use this so Creative Commons is a great way to be able to expand your image capabilities if there's something that you want imagery for that you can't necessarily go find Another good source for that is Wikimedia Commons. And this is all imagery that is either allowed with Creative Commons or it has moved into the public domain and it means no one owns the copyrights too. So you can look here and use their searches. And then this will get you into subcategories even, so you can find exactly what you want. Maybe you want some blank pages just for their texture. So that's another good way to get imagery and to be able to work around copyrights. But like I said, experiment with a little bit of both while you're learning. So now what do we do with our images? Where do we go from here? We want to get started back in Photoshop. Um, and it's up to you. You might download a bunch of them and know where you're going with your collage, or it might form as you go and you might add some things as you go. But make sure that you are using a variety of different layers, a variety of different images, and really using this opportunity to learn your Photoshop tools. So speaking of tools, how we get our pages, our pictures, our images into our collage is to either, if we have them open in a folder, we can drag them to the Photoshop icon on our dock and it will open them in a separate tab. That's good. I will show you, but I don't want you to do this. If you drag it directly into Photoshop, and then I confirm that I want it there, it's going to con convert it into a smart object. It actually creates several additional steps that you have to do to be able to manipulate it, especially when you're trying to collage. So it's really, it seems like an easier, faster way to just pop it right in there, but it's really complicating the process. So please make sure that you're not just dragging it in. And the way to tell is if it shows up like this with a little icon here, right, whoops, right here that says it's a smart object. So I'm going to delete that and make sure that I open it in a tab next to my collage. You can also choose File Open, navigate to your folder. Should let me, well, 
navigate to your folder, virtual student. It's good practice to get there, GDIM share, GDIM1, and 1A is where I have the folder for this. Collage to vector, and now I can open my imagery this way as well. And it will always open in a separate tab, and that's good, that's what you want, so that you can just cut what you want and bring it over to your collage. To get started though on looking at internet imagery and the kind of imagery that Photoshop deals with, I want you to take a look at this image. I'm going to hit Command-0 and fit it to screen. I've got my navigator open too. Give it a little more room maybe so it's not quite so crunched. The navigator is wonderful because you can zoom in but still see the whole picture and you can move around in the image as well. You'll notice when you zoom in really far, Photoshop will outline your pixels. If you don't want those, you can go to View and uncheck Extras. It'll turn back on eventually, but at least for now, I can see my pixels without anything in the way. So you'll see, as we zoom in, you'll see pixels, right? That's because Photoshop deals in what's called bitmaps. It's a file comprised of a grid with pixels. And the resolution that we talked about earlier refers to how many pixels per square inch. So if we were to take a measurement of the pixels per square inch, we would find that that matches the resolution. You know, you know we set our resolution for our document that we opened to 300. Do you think this one's 300? Let's go find out. How you do that is by going to image, image size, and then right there, it tells you the resolution, the physical size, and the pixel dimensions. So for this, we want to look at the resolution. Resolution refers to how many pixels per square inch. 72 pixels per inch, or PPI, is what screens see. So many images that are uploaded just to be viewed on screens are 72 PPI. That is good enough quality for a screen. It's not good enough quality to print, and it's not as good of quality to be able to manipulate and edit it. So how we fix that is one of two ways. We can either type right in the resolution and actually bump it up. Now I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice it zoomed us in even further. But now when we zoom out and go look at some of the areas where we were, you might notice more detail because there are now way more pixels per square inch than there used to be. And so when we zoom out, you get finer detail. I'm going to undo that image size because I want to show you that you don't even have to take the time to do that by bringing your images into your collage document that's already set to 300 ppi. You're bumping them up that way. So for this one, I actually think that this would be a cool background for my whole collage. So I'm just going to use this one whole. So to do that, I'm going to back up. So I'm just going to use this one whole. So to do that, make sure you are on your Move tool, which is at the top of your Tools palette. If you don't see it, go to Window and make sure Tools is checked. So to grab the whole thing in the background, I'm going to click and drag and highlight the other tab and drag it down to the window and drop. Hmm, but you notice it's not coming. Does any of my Photoshop sleuthers know why I might be having problems? Let me go try again. Okay, it came with me there. Now I come down here and it should appear. Oh, but when I go to drop it, it doesn't work. So, anytime Photoshop is not working for you, there are two places that I tend to look to find the answer and very often do. You want to look up at the tab for each image. So a correctly set up image will say the name, the file kind, and then the how far you're zoomed in. Let's see that matches 32-3%. And then a proper image will say RGB slash 8. So let's go look at the other ones we have. Hmm. This says that it's index, not RGB, slash 8. So what that means is that instead of being a red, green, blue color scheme, which is what Photoshop deals in, understands, and edits the best, it is a different indexed color scheme. That means that Photoshop can't understand what to do with the image. 
there's a quick easy way to fix it. You go to image, mode, choose RGB. Now I click, I hold, I hold, I hold, I let go, and voila, there is my image.